I've been playing this game for a long time. A very long time. And there's nothing that upsets me more than players struggling to complete the season. Or worse, all of you quote veteran players coming up with excuses to not do it at all, despite it taking less than three hours to get rewards. The Holy Court of Calphium gave me permission to make this best darn season guide ever, so sit tight, this is Quick Guides. Season is the perfect time to make a new class for you to try out and level really quickly. If you're unsure of what to pick, occasionally when a new class is released, there will be bonus rewards for leveling that class, and that will always be a safe option. Or of course, you can make whatever class your Dent of a Guildmate has convinced is meta this season. You do get to effectively make and keep two characters this season, so keep that in mind. As for you new players, a half decent way of determining what class is best for you you can look in the skill graph of each class in the menu to get a gist of what role they play in group content. All, and I repeat all, of these classes do way more than enough damage for PvE and PvP. That graph is strictly for generalizing that class's role in groups. This paired with the preview videos for Awakening of Succession should give you a good idea of how each class will play out. My recommended pick for new players is whatever looks the coolest to you, as they all have roughly the same clear speed in PvE, except for a few specifics at specific spots. Some of you may be coming from other games, and if you're looking for actual class advice, which and Wizard play the closest to a traditional MMO caster type, while the Guardian, Valkyrie, and Warrior play closest to a traditional Sword and Shield tank. As for traditional main DPS roles, we have Musa, Mewa, and Ranger. Those are going to be the easiest to play for new players, and roughly translate to older game styles. Again, everything in the game does massive damage and can compete with one another in PvE. I just think these classes will be more suited for people that enjoy a more traditional combat style. For the most part, all these classes that I've mentioned can be played exclusively through the hotkeys, so take advantage of that until you're comfortable with action. So you've picked out your class and you're ready to rock and roll, but not so fast. You first gotta pick between Ancient Stone Chamber and Mountain of Eternal Winter. For all veteran players that plan on just leveling themselves with grinding or getting power leveled, Always, and this is important, always go to Ancient Stone Chamber. You're going to be flopping around the mountain for two hours unless you like questing. It's just slower. New players, you'll have to go through the main quest line whether you like it or not. However, I do still recommend going with the Ancient Stone Chamber. The difference here is the Ancient Stone Chamber will take you directly through the main quest line that you must do to have basic functions in the world of Black Desert Online. That said, if you do enjoy puzzles and a slower quest pace, close to what it's like in normal RPGs, like single player type stuff, the Mount of Eternal Winter is very fun and still an okay place to start your journey. If you've picked Stone Chamber and make it to Velia after talking to Olison, you'll be granted access to the Season Simplified questline, and all you have to do is get to level 58. Please note that this questline is only for adventurers who have completed the main questline at least once. For new players, whether you've picked Stone Chamber or Winter, your goal will be completing the main quest all the way through the questline, Reliving the Darkness. You can always check your quest progress or future objectives with a quest window by pressing O. The main quest tab is put in order, and you will have to do all of these in order unless you start in the Mountain of Eternal Winter. Getting through Reliving the Darkness will get you all the beginner materials that you need, as well as unlock the simplified quest for your next season character, which you will be making later. At level 60, the Black Spirit gives you a quest for killing 3,000 monsters that gives 30% of the EXP to 61. This can only be completed once per season, even if you make a second character. Besides that, super good quest, super easy, accept it as soon as possible, you'll complete it on, along the way. As you're going through the main quest, you'll receive these beginner black zones that are used to enhance Naru gear, which you should have also picked up along the way by now. It's not worth using any advice of Valks that you may have gone through quests or events or login rewards up until this point. As the game gives you so many of the stones, you can just spam the shit out of the Naru Enhance button until you climb your way through 1 through 15 and then eventually pry through pen. Once you've clicked a pen, the game will give you an option to immediately convert it to Tuvala. Do not, and I, I mean this guys, I mean this. Do not do this. Your season pass requires you to equip basically one of every Naru at pen. Just to complete it, okay? It's not the end of the world. If you do, if you do, if you accidentally convert it, you can just talk to Fugar. It's alright. It's not that bad. 
but just equip it saves you a shit ton of time. All right, I know you're out at Miramot getting power leveled. I'm looking at you. After you've equipped it, you can now convert it by clicking the sword icon next to your equipment window by pressing I. Never enhance the Naru accessories. It's just a massive waste of materials and time. Now that you've got yourself a fresh set of Pride Tuvala gear, it's time to enhance some gear. Despite what all the sweaty sweats that haven't seen the light of day, IRL or in game because they've been locked in crypt for the past six months, whatever they're going to tell you, I'm here to tell you that it is okay. It's okay. It's okay to use Cronstones to enhance Tuvala gear. It's literally designed to help you enhance, so use it as such. When upgrading to Vala gear, it is recommended to skip the pride to try headache by using the refined magical black stones. But if for whatever reason you want to enhance it yourself, or you've run out of materials, the best stacks to use for pride to duo is 10 to 20, and duo to try 20 to 40. Getting to Tet, you'll want to use something between a 40 and 60 stack, and for Pen, you'll want to use whatever your highest stack is. I recommend stopping at 90 because then you can start using it on real gear. How do you get these so-called fail stacks? You can feed your black spirit between a plus 5 and a plus 30 fail stack using the black stones you get from grinding anywhere in the game. Or by using an advice of Valks. You'll get the listed fail stack directly put into your enhancement window. The game will give these out during events or for certain quests. And a fun fact, Fugar will give you 7 different plus 40 advice of Valks for each piece of gear you get to try and equip, as well as 70 plus 60 of Ice of Valks for Tet. Again, it is my personal recommendation that you start using Krons once you've got into Tet to prevent it from going back down. It is such a headache, getting 40 stacks as a new player is already hard enough as it is and you don't need to be wasting them on this. Grind up, get some Krons, tap, take the easy nice and slow if you're new. If you're a veteran player, you definitely have a shit ton of these lying around. You've been going to world bosses and crap. Tap it, right? Like, save your crons. If you're a veteran, if you're a new player, this is your best set of gear. Use use the crons. Use the crons. Use the crons. Use the crons, man. They're there for you. It makes the game so much more enjoyable. Don't burn yourself out in the first fucking season that you try. Use the crons. I recommend saving the accessories for last as they cost a lot of Tuvala ore and are the hardest to upgrade for the least amount of stats. When it is time to enhance these, it is much easier to click up than you probably think. Getting from base to pry, I use a plus 10. To duo, I use a plus 15. To try a 20. To tet a 30. To pen like a 40, maybe a 50, or maybe a 60, right? I would kind of stop at 60. I'll leave these on screen for you to take a nice look at real quick. And remember that you can just feed your Black Spirit Black Stones to get all the way up to a plus 30 stack. That'll take you most of the way through this. You will fail these a lot and they will explode. So whenever you get an upgrade, always equip it and start a new piece that you won't mind having explode on you. If you accidentally end up with more accessories than you need for a specific slot, you can always melt it down into Tuvala Ore. Each level will give you more and more ore depending on the level so don't feel like you've wasted anything. You may be wondering how to get all of these materials for Tuvala, and the answer is grinding. The answer for everything from now on is either grinding or questing, or both. If you're going through with a friend, I recommend checking out Warragon Nest or Basilisk Den, as you really only need Pry or Duo Tuvala gear to grind there. If you're a Sigma Chad, you can always look at grinding any of the solo desert spots. I recommend Desert Naga or Kadri if you've got the AP. You can always go to Poly's Forest and spend the rest of your life there if the desert sounds too bland for you. Once you've worked up to around 235 AP, you can actually start looking into teaming up for grinding Miramok for some really fast EXP and actual mid to late game sort of money. Seriously, your goal during the season is to get to Miramak and start making money while on the season servers. There's a few other spots that you can unlock kind of towards the end, but Miramak's going to be the easiest, cheapest, most effective way of earning money super early into the game. If you're struggling to get materials through grinding a single spot, you can go through each spot and complete the region quest for materials. These are the little pop-up quests that show up next to your minimap while grinding. On screen is the full list of grind spots that give these quests, and there's always the weekly quest that you can do for 600 time-filled black soon. Press O and check the recurring tab under the season section to see the full list. If for whatever reason you get lost during the season, just look at the season pass as it is what gives you all the big kid rewards and it's a good general 
guideline for new players to follow. Remember that you can hover over each objective to get a more detailed explanation of what to do for it. For the part where it says visit a skull instructor to learn about skills, you simply walk up to any skull instructor in town and use the glowing chat option in the middle. You can find the closest one with the search NPC button and pressing skill instructor. Same goes for the silver bus from the storage keeper, it's the same process. In order to use the item collection scroll gauge at level 2, you can access it through the menu, just search up item, press the plus button on the gauge, and select at least one scroll to put into the gauge. Then by clicking on the bag, you can press on either 0, 1, or 2, select level 2 to complete the objective. Doing this will give you a 100% drop rate increase and 100% drop amount increase at level 2. The gauge ticks down every 2 seconds instead of 1, so whatever time it shows there, divided by 2. Defeat one boss from the Dark Rift objective must be completed by your seasonal character. These are any of the bosses that spawn weekly at random times during the week. To check on where your Dark Rifts are, use the Dark Rift menu that you can get to via searching Dark Rift in the escape menu. To defeat Igor Bartali in a game of Yard, you're going to have to locate Igor Bartali. You can do it by just going to Velia City, it should auto-path you directly to him. Interact with him, press the R button in that menu down there at the bottom, and It'll put you in some kind of card game kind of similar to poker. Just complete the hands by matching the left side hand, stacking multiple of the same number in one hand. The final objective is to complete the quest that gives you Fugar's timepiece, which you can get by being a certain level and just talking with Fugar and Velia. Once you've collected all of your season rewards, or reached a high enough level, or just don't like your current character, you can use the Fugar's timepiece. This timepiece will make it so that you get a new season character that instantly picks up all of the combat stats that your last character had, and in order to use this timepiece properly, shove all of your gear and any other items into an easy to access storage like Velia. And I do mean all gear, the game won't let you use this without unequipping everything first. After emptying your inventory, make a new character and select the stone chamber start, and immediately jump back to your current or old season character. Right click the timepiece in your pearl inventory and select the newly created character and hit confirm. If you've done everything correctly, once you get to Alustin and Velia, he should just give you the simplified quest and then all you have to do is spam complete the objectives as they should all be marked completed instantly. And you'll be left with two fully leveled characters with plenty of stats and fully completed main quest lines. When graduation rolls around, you can instantly hop off to go grind with the big kids in their high-end spots and start earning room. Here. Veterans, it's worth noting, you can get the end of season reward without graduating, as the only requirement for it is to complete the season pass. However, as a new player, I would recommend staying in season as long as possible and just grinding there for lower competition and easier grinding in your grind spots. If for whatever reason you really want to have a main server character, you can use your season grinding to gear up your timepiece character that you aren't using anymore. This way you'll have a main character and then a season character to grind on if the main servers get to be too much for you. So this was a longer video for my channel. I hope it was as concise and entertaining as usual and helps at least one of you new players or maybe a veteran that refuses to run through their season. Season is the first step to achieving high-end PvE and PvP content in the game. It's a long journey from here. So enjoy the grind and don't get too focused on the gear of other players. Just play the content you're having fun with. Have fun with it. It's a game. Have fun. And as always, good luck and happy grinding.